Hi everybody! So today we're going to have a little look at the NESA rubric for our next module, which is Module A, Contemporary Possibilities. Now at KHS we have a little theme that we run with when we do this module, and we call it the search because we figured that whenever we do stories we're always searching for something. We're either searching for entertainment or maybe the composer is searching for identity or the characters are. So we've called it the search Partly too, because when we do contemporary possibilities, we do a lot of really new stories that literally do use internet searches and whatnot to make sure that we understand them. So we're going to have a look at our first paragraph here in the rubric. You have got this in your booklet already. And what I'd like you to do is to either start highlighting or thinking about some of these terms that come up throughout the rubric. Because the rubric seems quite big, so um, we kind of need to start breaking it down. So in this module... Students extend their knowledge, understanding and appreciation of the ways that different communication technologies shape the way we read, navigate, understand and respond to digital, multimedia, multimodal and non-linear texts. They develop understanding of the creative possibilities made available through these rapidly evolving technologies and the ways that we communicate and represent ideas and experiences. Now there's a lot there, there's only two sentences in that whole paragraph and lots of big, um, sort so of lots of meta language. So let's break it down a bit. You're going to extend your knowledge, understanding and appreciation of the ways that different communication technologies shape how we read. So in the old days it was like novels and stuff, right? People read lots of books. But nowadays we've got all sorts of ways that we can communicate through different digital stories, um, through Facebook, through Twitter, through whatever it is that you use, Snapchat, Instagram, um, and we're constantly telling stories. We just don't realize that we're doing it. So what we're doing is looking at the way that these different technologies allow us to read stories in different ways, how we can navigate stories so we can literally choose what stories we want to read and how we read them these days. Like we don't need to read a whole thing. We can just go to the end of it and choose that part of a digital story. Um, so we're looking at the pathways that we use to tell stories. We're looking at how we understand and respond to digital stuff, so online stuff. Multimedia, multimodal, and non-linear texts. Now, I found some definitions for these. Ooh, let me just move my screen a bit. Okay, so here are some definitions. We've got multimedia here, multimodal here, and non-linear here. Now, part of your booklet asks you to write down some of those definitions in your own words. So I'm going to ask you to pause on this screen when you come to do that activity and I want you guys to summarize or synthesize some of the information here, particularly for multimedia and multimodal because they can be quite confusing about the differences between the two and if you don't understand the differences then we can talk about them a bit later. But if we go back you are going to develop an understanding of the creative possibilities made available through these rapidly evolving technologies. So we're going to look at the evolution of storytelling and the way that we tell stories. Um, and we're going to look at the ways we communicate and represent ideas and experiences both today and how that's happened in the past. So just to give you a very quick idea, okay, we started with things like cave paintings and oral storytelling. All right, things that allowed people to not have to use writing because obviously they weren't writing at that point. We used our voices and we used images to tell stories. We still use images to tell stories. So this is from thousands of years ago. And we're looking at the ways that things like these, um, like cave paintings, actually sort of lead into stories that we read today. We then went to written traditions and Miss West has got some stuff on the Iliad for you. So we're going to have a look at some Greek stories. Then we move on to the novel. And interestingly enough, the first novel was written in the 11th century um, in Japan by Murasaki Shikibu. So we're going to have a little look at how novels worked and then how these technologies, like old technologies, like the novel, became really accessible for people through things like the printing press. Okay, so this is like now a really old school technology from hundreds of years ago around Shakespeare's time and before that. We still use it today, not the way that this guy's doing it, but kind of looking at how the evolution of stories still affects us today and how we still use some of these um, sort of means to tell our stories and to create our stories. Then we're going to move on to film, which is going to be the core text 
for this particular module, you are going to study a film as your big major text, along with um, some other things that we'll come to in a minute. And then we're kind of looking in terms of the evolution of stories at today. So contemporary podcasts, interactive digital stories, audiobooks, social media. I mean, you guys know all these stories pretty well. We've got things like podcasts, um, all of these different ways of telling stories like you know, tweets, for instance, you can tell a story in however many characters these days, and it's still a legitimate way of telling a story. We've also got a lot of virtual realities that we're creating today. So we're going to have a look at how we started from thousands of years ago all the way down here, and we've moved up to storytelling today in all of these different ways that we tell stories. That's the basis of this unit or module. Okay, so our next paragraph says students engage in a detailed study of one complex multimodal or digital text for example film media or interactive narratives so we're going to study a film as one of our major as our major core text um, and then we've got a couple of other little texts that we'll look at to support their study students also explore a range of texts that typically use contemporary technologies like film television online news services and specific social media platforms they apply their understanding of the nature, scope, and ethical use of digital technology in their own responding and composing. So here, this is probably our big important um, sentence. They apply their understanding. So to apply means that you're actually showing your teacher you understand how these things work, both through writing and through composing your own stuff, um, through analyzing other people's work as well. So you're going to look at the nature, the scope and ethical use. Now, this is a big one here that we're going to study, the ethical use of digital technology, which kind of comes into a lot of, you know, Facebook and all of that sort of stuff. So we're going to have a little look at all of that. Um, and searching, which is the film we do, um, is really good. And composing, how do you respond to text and then how do you compose them yourself? Next slide. Okay, here's our core texts. All right, so you notice here they're all pretty contemporary. Um, 2014 is our oldest one, and it's going to be a novel. Now, we'll either do the whole novel or excerpts of the novel. We'll see how we go. Um, but this is a great novel to do because it makes a lot of comments on modern technologies and how they've changed the world around us. <laughs> Our core film is going to be Searching. Now, this is a, a really multimodal text because it uses, um, we have to listen to it, we have to view it, but within itself, it uses a lot of multimedia. So the whole thing is filmed on a computer screen and it's about a father's search for his daughter, um, which hopefully will take you into the HSC stuff when we start to do crime fiction as well for next year. Dad? Hey, sweetheart. Where are you? Study group. I'm gonna go all night. Oh, one more thing. I want to know Dad. about the final you took today. <laughs> I'm Margo. I'm 15. Student. 911, what's your emergency? I'm calling to report a missing person. Okay, who is this regarding? My daughter. Then digital resources, you're going to be doing things like um, true crime podcasts, and we're going to have a look at some interactive stories and how they work online. All right, our last sort of slide here, if I just move this down again, sorry. Um, so students develop a deeper appreciation and understanding of the power of communication technologies to reach a broad audience for a range of purposes and the significance of this mode of communication in a global world. So basically storytelling today, in the olden days, storytelling was just for people who could read 
or it was for people who could sort of um, listen and speak and, you know, through oral traditions. But now, because so many people have access to technology, there are millions of stories globally that can be told and can be listened to. So we're going to have a look at how um, the impact of like worldly stories has changed the way that we read stories and understand the search for self and um, the search for identity and all of that sort of stuff. Um, through a close study of the selected texts, students appreciate the active roles of both composer, so it could be an author, a poet, a playwright, a director, a designer, and the responder, which is you or other people, any audience, could be a reader, a listener, a viewer. Um, and we're going to be looking at the way that these are controlled and how we choose reading pathways through text. So how does a composer choose the way that we read text now, and also how do we choose it as a responder, which you can do in digital stuff. Um, you are going to analyze and interpret the ways composers use and manipulate a variety of oral, language, and visual devices, so Oaken, to shape our understanding of what we listen to, read, or view, and may explore notions of hybridity and intertextuality. Now, these are two other texts, other um, definitions that you guys need to find. Hybrid is basically when one thing is born of two different things, okay? So, for instance, a podcast is born of things that used to go onto iPods and broadcasts from a radio, and that turned into one new thing, which was a podcast. So it's a hybrid because it's made up of two different texts, and it's just one brand new text. So you guys have to write down definitions for some of these words. Intertextuality, I hope you remember from Animals, Monsters and Machines, but if not, you need to go back and visit that. Revisit it, sorry. Okay, down here. Through their responding and compose composing, students gain increasing confidence in experimenting with a range of language and visual forms and features to individually or collaboratively design and create their own multimodal or digital texts to communicate and represent their ideas, understanding the importance of creating a responsible digital footprint. So responsible is a really big word here. How do we tell stories in a way that means we're telling a story that's applicable for everybody and we're being responsible and we're being ethical with our uses. So are we making sure we're good citizens at the same time as using digital resources, um, which is a really big issue we have with things like fake news um, these days. So we're going to have a little look into things like that as well. But this is all about how you are composing. All right. So you guys become the experimental sort of storytellers. And finally, through viewing, listening, or reading, students analyze and assess the text-specific features and form. They express their knowledge and understanding clearly and concisely using appropriate register, structure, and modality. So can you show, prove to us that whatever forms you're using, whether it be a podcast or a film, do you know how to use those specific techniques? It's always in English the what and the how. So what is the story that you're telling? How are you telling it? Okay, and it's the same with other composers. What are they saying and how are they saying it? The two very basic things in English. And are you able to do that for specific forms like film or podcast? All right, you express your knowledge and understanding clearly and concisely using appropriate register structure and modality. This is all about editing. Are you able to edit work and make sure it looks good, it sounds good, and it's well written if you're writing? They independently and collaboratively plan, draft, appraise, and refine their own responses to text, applying the conventions appropriate to forms of syntax, spelling, and grammar. Okay, so syntax is literally just um, sentence structure. Spelling, we know that one, and grammar is, you know, obviously you know that. Are you editing your work well so that your teacher can um, understand that you've spent time on trying to compose texts. All right, everybody, I think that's it from me for today. Um, good luck with it. You've got a few activities that you need to get done um, in order to get to know the rubric, but I hope that gave you an overview of what we have to do in this module. And I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. There's lots of really cool texts that we can study in this one um, and a lot that you can sort of um, look at yourselves because, yeah, lots of it you already know because you do it every single day without realising. All right, see ya.